And lastly, let me leave you with the biggest loser study. This was the New England Journal of Medicine 2016. The summary was they followed contestants from the TV show who lost an average of 129 pounds over 30 weeks. That's crazy. That's a crazy amount of weight over 30 weeks. Do you guys remember watching that show? I remember watching it in horror. And I got to say, anybody involved in that show that's still around today, I have no respect for because they did that to their people. They yelled at them. I remember certain influencers who are still online today yelling at the people. And these poor people are trying their best and their bodies are just, I mean, it's like, tell me, you know, nothing about hormones and metabolic health. Like it's, it's just wild. It was terrible to watch. And these people are still, these are the same people that are screaming that Ozempic is evil. These are these are people who are still with big platforms screaming that Ozempic is evil. And I don't get it. It's like, are you trying to stay relevant by shaming fat people still? Because that's what you were doing back on The Biggest Loser. So they used extreme caloric restriction and intense exercise. For those of you who haven't seen The Biggest Loser, it was terrible. They basically put these people in a camp for 30 weeks and just pummeled them. What happened? Their resting metabolic rate dropped by 500 calories a day on average. This was a 275 calorie a day lower than predicted. This was severe, severe metabolic adaptation as an example. Six years later, most had regained the weight and their resting metabolic rates were still suppressed. Which leads me to believe, I don't know if they followed them past that, but it leads me to believe that this might be forever. And I've heard this in the obesity community and I've been studying obesity pretty intensely for the past two years on a level I've never studied it before. And I have a whole newfound appreciation for obesity as a disease. Go back and listen to the episode I just did with Dave Knapp. He's the on the pen guy. Um, that's his platform on the pen. Really, really nice guy, independent journalist. He lives with the disease of obesity and he talks about it quite a bit. And I think he represents it well. But the bottom line was these Folks on The Biggest Loser, their bodies were stuck in starvation mode, maybe forever, permanently is what it looked like. That's what's happening to people who are losing massive calories or restricting massive calories in a short amount of time and losing massive amounts of weight. But the thing is, is this small study showed that terzepatite is protective against that. I would say that's a massive win. It's significantly better than just saying, oh, they lost weight because they ate less. There was the calorie study, C-A-L-E-R-I-E -E study, long-term caloric restriction in non-obese humans. The summary was that participants restricted calories for 25% for two years. They lost moderate weight, 10 to 15% of their body weight. The metabolic effects, they also experienced metabolic adaptation. Their resting metabolic rate declined more than expected. They increased fatigue, cold sensitivity, hormonal suppression. Your thyroid just gets tanked out in this case. Sex hormones, your estrogen, your testosterone, progesterone, and elevated hunger. So what these studies show us is that typical dieting causes the body to fight back. It pushes back. The bigger the calorie gap, the harder your metabolism hits the brakes. And weight loss is achieved at the cost of long-term metabolic health. So all these folks out there, all these folks online saying it's just calories in, calories out, eat less calories, track your calories, track your macros, macros, track your calories. I will say track your macros. Like if any, I mean, don't worry about any of them except eat enough protein is my stance on it. If you get enough protein and you're not going to have any room to be shoving in a bunch of terrible macros on top of it. But any of these folks helping everyone in the world with their caloric restriction, I really encourage them to track their clients and let me know how they're doing a year later or two years later or three years later, because I've helped many patients with caloric restriction and metabolic adaptation is real, yo, and it is brutal. And it's very hard for those folks to maintain that weight loss. And the argument against GLP ones that I've been hearing even recently on some big podcasts with some big name doctors, I've been hearing them say, Oh, well, the problem is, is once you lose all the weight, you're Metabolic adaptation is going to kick in. It's going to be harder to keep it off. Yeah, except these peptides seem to be at least trisepatide, which is a dual agonist, seems to be showing protection against that. So sorry, Dr. So-and-so, who keeps spreading that information all over the world with his giant megaphone. You are not correct. <laughs> <laughs>